It is my great pleasure to introduce uh, our next performer, who is a very good friend of mine. I am very lucky to count him among my friends. He's kind, he is incredibly talented, he is one of my absolute favorite authors that exists on the face of this or any other habitable, 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 habitable planet in our solar system and whatever they're calling Pluto these days. So. It is my great, great pleasure to uh, bring on stage the legendary uh, Pat Rothfuss. Hey, everybody. I've had the George Martin song stuck in my head now. Uh, it's a really dangerous song for me to have stuck in my head. So I'm going to tell you a little story in a second here. But before that, I have kind of an announcement that is fresh today. Given the fact that you are all geeks, you are probably clued in maybe to this announcement already, depending on how much you've been plugged in today. But at this point, I can officially announce that my books are in development with New Regency for a potential TV show. <laughs> Which, as you know, could be horrifying news. <laughs> Depending on, you know, I tend to get two sorts of messages. The, please turn your stuff into a movie, or whatever you do, don't turn your stuff into a movie. Um, we actually have just brought a writer onto the project, and, like, he really, really gets it. Like, I, I'm not shitting around here. I, this is not the Hollywood speak. Like, he sent me an email... And he's like, here's how we have to do it. We gotta, it's all about the world, the revolution of the world, and the slow build. And, and I'm like... <laughs> and so I think it might actually be cool. That's all I'll say about it for now. But I wanted you to be the first to know. <laughs> and so now, story time. Now, most people know me for my great big fat fantasy books, but I occasionally dabble in other things. Uh, this is a not-for-children picture book that I wrote uh, a while back. It's called The Adventures of the Princess and Mr. Wiffle. Let's take these down all the way, too. We'll get it good and dark. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in a marzipan castle. She lived there all alone. All. Except for Mr. Wiffle, who didn't count because he was only a teddy bear. And the thing under the bed. Mr. Wiffle was the princess's best friend. They spent all their time together and had many fabulous adventures. They found buried treasure by the old stump. They defeated the Black Duke's rebellion at the Battle of Bainbridge. Victory came at a great price. The princess was sore wounded, and Sir Wiffle was forced to take terrible revenge. They fought Greenbeard the pirate and defeated him. Though in the heat of battle, Mr. Wiffle was nearly drowned and was only saved due to the princess's quick thinking. But when her daytime adventures were over, the princess always returned to her marzipan castle. After she had dinner and washed her face, she and Mr. Wiffle went to bed. 
but they were not alone. The princess had never seen the thing under the bed because it didn't like the lights. During the daytime, when the bright sun was out, it hid in the deep shadows under the bed. It even hid at night when the lamps were lit. That's why the princess always kept a candle burning. But some nights when it was stormy out, there were drafts in her room. And then the thing didn't need to hide anymore. The princess had never seen the thing, but she knew what it was like. It had great wide eyes that could see in the dark and a great wide mouth for tasting things. It had thin flat lips and a wide flat tongue. Its skin was greenish grayish brownish. The princess thought that it was prickly like a nettle, or scaly like a fish, or slimy like a frog, but it was actually soft like velvet, so the thing never made any noise at all when it moved. The princess knew that it had great big hands with great long fingers, and its long, long arms had an extra elbow so it could reach out from under the bed, reach up, then bend to reach the top of the bed. And tickle the princess silly. <laughs> We're not done. One day, a package arrived for the princess. She loved the kitten. She and Mr. Whiffle spent a long time trying to decide what his name should be. The princess wanted to call him Mr. Mutton Chop because of how he smelled. <laughs> Mr. Whiffle wanted to call him Moloch because of his pointy, pointy claws. They compromised by calling him M.M., or Emmy for short. But then Emmy got lost. He wasn't in their treasure mine, or in the old cave. Mr. Whiffle suggested they look in the river, but Emmy wasn't there either. They knew he couldn't get over the wall or past the gate. They looked everywhere. But they still hadn't found Emmy by dinner time. Oh. That night, the princess couldn't sleep. Thinking about her lost kitten made her tummy hurt. Even worse, her candle was short. And the night was long and her tummy hurt. Then the princess heard a noise from under the bed. She knew it couldn't be the thing because it never made any noise except sometimes a soft, velvety rustle. The noise sounded familiar to the princess. It was like the sound an animal would make if it wanted to cry out, but it was muffled and quiet. Then the noise stopped and the princess heard a soft, velvety sound, like something was reaching and bending, reaching and bending. Then something wet and warm fell onto her face. Drip, drip, drip. Then Mother Moon came out from behind a cloud and the princess saw what the thing was holding. was a big piece of marzipan. <laughs> it
It was sticky and drippy because the thing had been eating it. He wanted to share and be friends. He was already friends with Emmy. They had been playing under the bed all day. <laughs> Emmy had been trying to call out to the princess, but he couldn't. He'd been eating marzipan with the thing, and his little kitten mouth was all gummed up. When he tried to mew, it came out. <laughs> but now they were together again. And now that the princess had met the thing, she wasn't scared anymore. And so the princess ate them. <laughs> Take a moment. And there was nothing left but sticky bones. So she and Mr. Wiffle made a fort out of them. <laughs> and had tea. Um, I've got about a minute left here. What's, uh, I, I would like to point out, okay, that this is not a simple, cheap, twist ending book. This is a book, like a lot of my stuff, actually, if you've read my other stuff, this won't come as a surprise. You can't get it fully until you've read it once already. Once upon a time, there was a princess who lived in the marzipan castle. She lived there all alone. <laughs> this is not the story you thought it was. <laughs> and uh, I don't have time to go through it all a second time. Um, but I will say, we're going to have some copies of it out there. If you want to pick one up, I will be out there during the intermission. I'll sign it for you. I apologize, I accidentally lied to people on my blog. I thought that we'd be doing a signing after this, but we're not. So if you want to get something signed by me or this book, you can grab me during the intermission, and I will make myself available to you then. Otherwise, thank you so much, Woodstock. Stop.